You know what would be really cool? If all of these left menu bar items were automatically generated. So if we could just create a page and then we automatically got a menu bar item and all of the routing was set up for us. So at the start of every video, we didn't have to go ahead and add the link to the layout and create the route and do all that stuff. So in this video, we're going to make it so all of that stuff is automated, which is gonna be really, really cool. And we're going to learn a little bit of Webpack magic along the way. Now, if there's stuff you don't understand in this video, that's totally fine. It's one of those things where you, you learn little bits and pieces about Webpack here and there. And then later on in your career, things will start to make more and more sense. I mean, honestly, there's a lot about Webpack that's still just starting to make sense to me. It's a beast, but super powerful. Anyway, let's dive right in. First thing I wanna do is create a new folder here and call it components. And inside of that, we'll throw all of our component related pages. So whack them in there. And we're going to get errors straight away, which makes sense because now in our layouts file, it doesn't know how to find all of these pages, but that's okay. We're gonna set that up in a little bit. Now we'll jump into router and create a new file here called component, what's a good name for this? Component importer. .js, and it's going to be in charge of importing all of these components that are inside of the pages components directory. What else? We're going to jump into our routes.js folder and comment out all of this, and that might actually get rid of our errors. So let's have a look. And it did, which is pretty cool. You could probably delete all of these files, but I'm just keeping them there for now so that I can reference it whilst I'm, uh, whilst I'm creating the component. Now let's come up here and import component importer from dot slash component importer. And a little trick I like to do is double click on this and go copy and double click on there and go paste just to make sure that the text of these two line up. So save that and let's jump in here and start playing around. We'll say export default an object and anything that is exported in here will be available. So this is kind of like where the API sits. And then up here, I'm just gonna whack in some functions. So the first thing we wanna do is say, hey, Webpack, I wanna know about all of the files in this components folder. So let's go ahead and create a function and we'll call it component file paths. And we'll say return require.context and we'll pass through their pages because pages is an alias for this directory here, slash components. So jump into pages slash components. We have to say false here, which basically means I don't want this to be a request. That can be useful for stuff like code splitting, but we don't wanna worry about any of that in this video. And then we pass it a regular expression that just checks that this is going to be a dot view file. And so for that, we'll say slash backslash dot view dollar sign slash. So what it's gonna do is jump into the pages components directory, which is this one here and find all of the dot view files. That's what this function does. Now let's just have a little look at that. So the easiest way is probably just to do this, component file paths, jump into our routes.js folder, console.log, whack that in there, and we'll call it from that, save it, open up our console, and there we go, we're getting a function back, but if you say dot keys, we get the result that we want. So we're getting an array of all of the files sitting in the pages components directory. That's a really good start. Now, the next thing I wanna do is basically create an array that strips this first part off here, the dot slash Q, and strips off the dot view part. So we have an array that just says, for example, Ajax bar, we'll get rid of the word page as well. So we wanted to just say Ajax bar, so that we can create, automatically create a link that says Ajax bar like that. I'll show you what I mean. We'll jump into the component importer file function, and we'll call this path names. And what are we gonna do? We'll return the result of this, and we'll grab the keys. That's what we were console.logging before, the keys from this. And so now we have an array that looks like this over here come down and say dot map. We'll take the string and then we'll return that string and just test what we have so far. Let's come down here, path names is what we'll export. And then we can come in here and say path 
names and call it. And that's giving us the same thing. So now we can start playing around with it. And the first thing we'll do is strip off this first part here, the dot slash Q. And we can easily do that by saying dot substring three. Save that. And now we've gotten rid of the first part. Next, we want to get rid of page dot view. We can do that by saying dot slice zero and minus, I think it's eight. Let's have a look here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So eight characters from the end. Save that. And there we go. Now we have an array that is just showing us the actual name that we want. Maybe I'll just zoom in a little bit here because it might be a little bit hard for some of you guys, especially if it's on a lower resolution. Now next, I think I want to turn this into its own function because it's probably something that we'll end up using again. So let's cut that and we'll call this function convert path to name path string. Actually, we're passing through there the string and make sure I spell that correctly. And then we'll create a function here, which is that convert path to name and that takes in the path string. Next, we'll return what we had before, but instead of string there, we'll have to say path string. Okay, so take the path string that's given to this function and then get rid of the beginning and the end. So we just end up with the path name. Might not be the best, um, best name for the function, but I think that will do at least for now. And now we're actually ready to start doing a little bit of the router magic. And I'll show you what that looks like. So let's say function routes. And we'll start by just creating a constant called paths. And what's that going to equal? We'll say component file paths. We'll get the keys out of that. And then we'll say dot map component path. So this is very similar to what we had before. And I want you to be able to see, see what things look like as I code here. So I'm going to return that and then we'll export that as get routes. And then I'm gonna come in here and we'll say get routes and console.log that just so we can have a look as we go. Now, it looks like my linter doesn't like something. So let's jump back in here and see what it doesn't like. Oh, it's because of some of the, it's because some of these functions are just defined but never used. So that can be helpful. It's not great for videos, is it? But that can be really helpful when you're building stuff as a team to make sure you don't have any redundant functions. So for now, I think commenting them out is okay. And let's just return that just so we can see where we're at. All right, so we have an array with the file paths. Next thing we wanna do is return an object. So this object is going to hold the actual route itself. And the path of that is going to be convert path to name. And we'll throw the component path in there, which means we can now enable this function again. Save that. And let's have a look at what we've got now. Cool, our routes are almost ready. So we've got the path name and it's not going to care about the capitalization there. So you could say too lowercase, but really it doesn't care. So I'm just gonna leave it and keep things simple. And the next thing we need to do is point it towards the component. So let's say component, and that's gonna be equal to a function that returns import source slash pages slash components slash. So now we're inside pages components. So we're sitting inside here now and we're going to add to the end of that the component path and we'll have to say dot substring because we need to get rid of the dot slash at the beginning. So substring two. Yeah, because what we actually had there with component path is dot slash, for example, Q avatar page dot view, and we want to get rid of the dot slash. And so now it's going to say source pages components slash Q avatar page dot view. All right, so hopefully all that makes sense. If it doesn't, that's totally fine. This video is a little bit more advanced and it's just so we can speed things up in the future. So that's our new object. So these are all of our route paths. Now let's come into 
routes.js. And I think we're ready. We can actually grab this, get rid of that. So I just cut that by the way, remove all of this here and using the spread operator dot, 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 we can paste it straight in and make sure there's a comma there. And I think that's going to work. Let's have a look. And it does. How cool is that? So we were able to remove all of those routes. And from now on, all we have to do is create the component and the routes are automatically going to register for us. However, there's one more problem. If we go to our main layouts page, so main layout, we still have to throw in all of the links. So let's see if we can automate that as well. We'll come down here and delete all of these components and we'll leave just one. This is gonna act as a bit of a template for us. And now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and let's import component importer from, where is that? Dot, dot, slash, router, slash, component importer. Copy that and paste it into there just to make sure the name's right. And now what we want, if we come into here, yeah, we want this here, the path name. So let's uncomment that. I'm going to copy that, scroll down here, and let's say get path names, whack it in there. And if you remember, the path names was basically an array of the names with all the other stuff stripped. So for example, avatar, well, just avatar on its own like that. So we're going to have an array that looks a little bit like that, which means that we can copy that, come back here. I'm gonna paste it there, copy this, whack it in there. And let's call this, how about component menu items, the menu items for all the components. So component menu items will now be equal to that array that has all of the names. I can copy that, and by the way, all of these are going to be unique because you can't end up with a file with the same name, which means that we can use it as a key. I'll show you what I mean. So now we can say v-4 equals menu item in component menu items. Let's space this out a little bit nicer. There we go. And we can use this as the key key is equal to that, and that's also going to be the route. So let's throw it in there like this. And I think that might actually be it. Let's see if it works. Oh, <laughs> I also have to change the name here. So let's whack the name in there, the menu item name, and we'll just put a queue at the front. So we're basically putting that queue back into it. And there we go and they work. How cool is that? Now, check this out. If I say Quasar new page, Q, because we have to add the Q to the start, and then something like example component. And remember, actually, we have to put it inside the components directory. So I'm going to come here and say component slash Q example component. Let's go ahead and create that. It does its magic behind the scenes, creates the routes for us, also adds the link to the main layout for us. And there it is. It actually shows up now. Oh, and I forgot to put the word page in. So you have to make sure that it follows what we've got here with the queue at the start and page at the end because of the way we built the component. So you might want to do that different, but I'll just leave it as is for now. So queue example component page does all the work for us. And there it is and it just works, how cool is that? So moving forward, it's going to be really, really easy to add new components to this tutorial series. Just to prove it works, and there we go. Delete that, and I will see you in the next video where we explore another component.